and the last week the recording uh i think i upload this the wrong uh, not upload i attached the wrong link so i have uh, corrected the link and also attach the notes for chapter seven and for today's we will go to some uh practice the okay, example and practice for some problems in your textbook so <clears throat> I hope you already scanned the QR code. This is just to make sure that uh, students already uh, attended the, the courses. Okay. Now, I think uh, we can start from, from this uh, 720, 21, 22, 23. We can select some question from here. Maybe we can start from this 720, okay, 720 first. So let me zoom in the question so you can also uh, read the questions. So a flow meter, the Thomas flow meter, it's a device, blah, blah, blah. They calculate, it's just a description. And the important thing is post device uh, inserted in a stream of nitrogen, stream of nitrogen. The current through the heating coil is suggested until the voltmeter reads 1.25 kilowatts. So you have some, <clears throat> at least some 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 heat, right? Some heat from the heating coil uh, around 1.25. And the stream temperature goes from this 33, uh, 30 Celsius, 30 degrees of Celsius, and uh, 110 kilopascal before the heater to uh, 34, and the same kilopascal. So it changed the temperature, okay? It changed the temperature. <clears throat> and if the enthalpy we can read as in this equations, what is volumetric flow rate? So volumetric flow, flow rate, uh, upstream of the heater, so at this 30 degrees Celsius, and less assumptions that you can make to to have an error. So you need to give reasons uh, or some assumptions that might uh, might imply an, an error for, for the calculations. <clears throat> okay, I think we can start to to at least draw the the diagram. Okay, we can draw the diagram. We have input and output, right? Uh, from the upstream, downstream. <clears throat> so let me go through a new page from here. Okay, so we can we can draw first, maybe we can draw a coil to note that there are <clears throat> some heat, some heat flow that is equal to 1.25. And then the pressure is 110 kilopascal. And we can draw this in in a box to just to help us to draw the schematics. Okay, so we just having thirty four and thirty degrees Celsius, and we have some mole per second for the flow. So for this is the nitrogen, the nitrogen. And we can write the equations for the enthalpy. It's 1.04 T and then uh, T minus 25 in degrees Celsius. So the enthalpy in kilojoule per kilogram and T in degree of Celsius. <clears throat> we can write the the enthalpy that is going out, which is having 34, right? And this will be equal to uh, 9, right? 9 point something. So 9.36 kilojoule per kilogram. And the enthalpy that goes in will be around 5, 5, 5, 5.2. 5. 
and then we have a delta for out and in this will be equal to 4.16 okay now every time we have uh, the statement for uh, the delta H and we would like to know um, at least we would like to know the, 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 the moles okay we would like to know the moles and then we can find the volume right from the moles then we are going to have so every time we have uh, this uh, specifically saying that we have some some flows we have um, um, we have input output we have some pressures uh, every time we have these conditions we always use the energy balance that states the the delta H the the kinetics energy potential energy the sorry the heat flow and then the washout okay and since there are no mentioning for other information like kinetics potentials and workshop we can take the the kinetics potentials and also the the work shaft they are all going to be assume zero so assume okay unless they mention some then you need to, to put on on the equation so then we have the heat flow is our delta h and delta h is remember this is depends on the, the moles and the moles multiply with the delta of the specific enthalpy so we can find the moles from this particular equation so we can have this is 1.25 kilowatts and divide by 4.16 kilojoule this is kilogram and we can exchange the unit the kilowatt so we can exchange with kilojoule per second kilowatt and then we need to have a convert kilogram to gram and also moles to the molecular weight so this is molecular weight of nitrogen so you need to do yeah it should be mentioned in the in the questions but but i uh, yeah it didn't say that in the questions okay. so this will be equal to the mole will be equal to after some calculations we will have 10.7 mole per second and the, and thus the flow rate will be 10.7 mole per second we are going to change to the liters for moles is to 22.4 liter and we just um, assume that this is at some standard temperature and pressure and of course we have the temperature and there are some change slight change on the kilopascal so we would have around 25.5 liter per second so this is the volumetric flow rate This is T, 30, 30 degrees Celsius, right? Okay, and then um, this the second question is assumptions. Probably the, the reason that you can write is um, heat may uh, may go goes to environment or surrounding. And 
some heat needed for heating the coil, right? And enthalpy is going to be linear, linearly dependent and independent of pressure. So the errors will be in the that might happen will be in the, uh, the temperature, the measured temperature, and the the watt, the watt reading. Okay. So what does this uh, means? Okay. So let, let me explain. So your your heat. So the heat. Maybe it goes out, goes out from here, heat, and there's still some heat that is still in this coil, right? Another heat, another heat in, in this coil, and the coil, and the and the, the, if you see the, the equations, it's a linear equation of that depends on the temperature, right? If you see, there is no pressure in here, so the pressure will be independent. So the error that might happen will be when you measure the temperature and when you measure the, the, the heat. Okay, so I hope this seems pretty much logically makes sense for um, what kind of errors that can happen. Okay, that, that is actually the question. So the question is asking um, what kind of errors that might happen from this um, problem. Since we have the linear equations and it depends only on T. So the T itself, when we read the temperature, there's, there will be some error, right? Because we don't really know. So that error could, could happen. Okay. So that's a 7.20. And uh, another necessary uh, point that the assumptions is really important in 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 most of the calculations in most of the calculation in energy balance so whenever it neglects some parts of the equations then you can assume that it, you don't need to involve that part okay? like the kinetics potentials and the workshaft not nothing involved the three then we can assume that we might not need this uh, particular Parts, so we can ignore. Okay. Okay, let's see another question. Okay, let's see another question, and I would like you to also try for a few minutes. Okay, for a few minutes, this is just my example to show um, one one question. Let let's try twenty one or maybe twenty two. Maybe twenty two. Let's try twenty two. Let's try twenty two. We have steam. Okay, we have steam that is expanded, so it has some conditions, initial conditions. It has uh, it, it expanded through a nozzle, and the the, it, the temperature change, the pressure change. Uh, negligible heat is transferred from the nozzle to its surroundings. The approach velocity of the steam is negligible. Okay, so some parts that you can ignore. Uh, specific enthalpy of steam is two thousand nine hundred seventy four at table sixty and seven bar. And two thousand eight hundred sixty at two hundred and four bar. So you have already been given the enthalpy that you need. You don't need to check in the table, right? Uh, use the open system energy balance to calculate the exit steam velocity. So. 
so uh, the initial velocity is ignored you can just calculate the velocity that is exit from from the uh, system okay you can try okay, maybe giving you a few minutes three three four minutes if you get the answer, you can write down the numbers, the, the velocity, how much the velocity needed. I think since the enthalpy given, I thought that it's, it should be not really complicated because you already get the, the delta for the enthalpy, right? the delta for enthalpy. anyone you can try to calculate and I think uh, the temperature the pressure it doesn't really affect the calculation since they introduce the enthalpy right And you can ignore some parts, right? You can ignore the heat that this goes from the system to surroundings. You can ignore the um, the, the 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 initial velocity. Okay, and after the class, after the lecture, I will also um, put the, put this all the notes for this example and practice, so you can also review at home. Okay, anyone? Do you have any numbers that you can uh, that you get? Anyone? You want to try? Yeah, yeah, four seven seven. I think it's it's quite simple, right? Simple calculations. No need to draw some uh, really uh, difficult um, difficult uh, schematics, right? So you just have to you have some input, right? Input at twenty sixty Celsius and seven bar, and then I, the output. Is two hundred degrees Celsius and four bar, and you have the heat is two nine seventy four. This is the enthalpy, uh, two eight sixty kilojoule per kilogram, kilojoule per kilogram. This is seven point twenty two right? right, and then goes to uh, the energy balance equation for open system kinetics. But uh, potentials and kinetics and potential uh, uh, point potentials and the work shaft it will be assumed as zero because uh, assume there's no information given so we are just focused on finding the kinetics as the negative delta H So the the heat flow also can be zero because we can neglect neglect the uh, this uh, negligible heat is transferred approach velocity is negligible okay that's that's the part so the the delta H or the 
delta kinetics will be equal to the mass, right? The mass, the velocity squared, or let me write velocity squared over 2 is equal negative. Uh, or maybe I will put 2 on here, negative 2. Or maybe the negative will be changed from um, supposed to be this is supposed to be uh, h out minus h in, but I will replace the or substitute exchange this two and then make it positive. So h in minus h out, right? And then the, oh, the M. Let me write the M. Okay. So we can cancel this. So this velocity is twice of 2974 to 860. And this will be equal to uh, 477.4 something like that or you can just write 477 meter per second this is V okay. the V squared or maybe let me write this going through here the V squared should be around two, uh, 228 Okay, I think not to complicate it. Okay, let me go for uh, maybe a little bit more um, more complex. For twenty twenty three, I I hope you can try this at home for seven twenty three. Okay, and we can move to. Um, let me check. I will do the, like I think twenty six. Mm. Maybe let me let me let me check the other one. I think this is also similar. Um, I think I will start with thirty five or thirty six. I think this is uh, a little bit different. From what we have, let me check. Okay, I think we can start from uh, thirty five, seven thirty five. So we have a turbine, uh, they discharge some steam, uh, two hundred kilogram per hour at ten bar uh, absolute. And it desi desired to generate steam at 250 degrees Celsius and 10 bar by mixing the turbine discharge with second stream. So you have two streams. Okay? So the first stream and the second stream. The second stream is having superheated steam at uh, 300 degrees of Celsius and 10 bar at, at 10 bar. So first, you need to, to take notes that this is saturated steam, the first thing. The second will be having the superheated steam. Okay, so if 300 kilogram per hour of the product steam is to be generated, so you, you are going to generate this much much steam, okay? How much heat must be added? Okay, now, if we look at the question first, the given information, we are going to use the saturated steam table and the superheated steam table, so at least B6 and B7 table that we might require okay, to evaluate the, the enthalpy. That's the, the first thing. And the second question, if the mixing is adiabatic, and then it's asking the, uh, the rate of the product steam generated. Okay, Adiabatic means there is no heat flow. Okay, you can say the heat flow is zero. 
So, but, but let me go through the first question, the, number A first. Okay. So let me let me draw. Well, maybe let, let's draw, try to draw here. Seven to the five. Let's giving some two strips and then having the some system over there. And then we have output stream. Oh, sorry, output stream like that. Okay, now first we have two hundred kilogram. Let me write right two hundred yeah two hundred kilogram per hour of the steam the water vapor right, and it is ten bar saturated. Okay, you need to check the enthalpy. So check table B6. If you check the table B6, you will get that the, the, the specific enthalpy at 10 bar, at the pressure 10 bar, will be equal to 2776.2 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, you can check. Now the second stream is having the same 10 bar but at 300 degrees celsius but it is superheated right superheated superheated steam and what is the the mass let me just write the mass as n2 kilogram per hour of this water and the second stream we need to use the stable v7 and if we want to look at, if we look at the table B7, the enthalpy is equal to 30.52 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, so we have the conditions, and we have the third conditions is N3. Okay, let me just write N3, although the question is supposed to be having 300. Let me just write this as our conditions first. Paper, 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 still 10 bar, but now it's going to have 250 degrees Celsius. And we can check also the enthalpy at this 10 bar 250 is equal to 943 kilojoule per kilogram. And we have this a heat, right? Heat kilojoule per hour. First is we have the mass balance. The mass balance 200, N2, and N3. So we can write first 200 plus N2 is supposed to be equal to N3. Okay, first we need to write all the conditions. So we have the mass balance. And second, we have the energy balance, right here, energy balance. So we're supposed to be having just only differences in the enthalpy and the heat flow. The output minus the input, you can take this, 200, and 2776.2 and plus and 2 and 352 okay at least we have these two equations okay we have these two equations equation one is mass balance equation two is the energy balance okay now we look at the questions uh if 300 kilogram to be generated so to be generated will be is asking if entry is equal to 300 kilogram per hour. So we will have, so if entry 300, then N2 will be 100. Oh, sorry. Okay. Now the heat flow. 
if we calculate exchange this with 300 exchange this with 100 we can get the heat flow is equal to 2.25 kilojoule per, per hour and number B if uh, Q is zero then we are we are going to solve a linear equations right linear equation so we'll have zero two nine four three and three minus uh, two hundred if you would like you can calculate also this one And you can exchange this uh, N3 and N2 by N3 is 200 minus oh, plus N2. So you can exchange to this and solve the linear equations because it has a zero result, right? After you get the linear equations, get the solutions, you can check this with substitutions method. You get that the N2 will be 306 kilogram per hour and N3 will be 506 kilogram per hour. Okay, so that's the, the question that is asked. So if, if the process is adiabatic, what is the, the steam or the product generated? Okay, I think not too complicated, right? Still can be managed. Okay, let me go through. Um, I think ten to seven is okay. Uh, I think you can try out your home. Thirty six and thirty. I think thirty seven, thirty seven and thirty eight. I think thirty seven and thirty eight. Okay, try it at your home. Uh, let me go through more. Um, I think for the. Okay, let, let's try 43, 43. Uh, I will give you a few minutes, 43. Okay, let's try 43. At least try the uh, for B if the mixing and the mixing B still be three hundred kilogram. Um, I think based on the question here, um, I think the the three hundred is the one that we are going to look for. For number A, for number A, the 300 is fixed as the the one that we desired, right? But for number B, we are having the adiabatics, and we would like to know the product that can be generated if it is adiabatic. Or if you're, or if you calculate, and it's still 300, that will be the, the different uh, different opinion, okay? I think that that should be the case. Okay, that should be the case, because if you read the questions, the questions is asking uh, at what rate is the product steam generated. So it's asking 
reversely asking the the entry right because if you're just having this energy balance this if you have this energy balance and we don't really know what happened with the heat flow or if we have this heat flow 2.25 from from all these uh, calculations or, or let me let me just explain if we don't know this um, n okay but still we have uh, we have difficulty because we have this this Q right this this heat flow so if the heat flow is zero with these two equations we can solve the linear equation right so we can we can have some substitutions there okay 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 now uh what is it oh 43 43 so calculate t1 and t2 So first, it's superheated steam, and then saturated steam. So we need to we need to have the table, right? Table for superheated and table for saturated. And the other important is, uh, oh yeah, you have the ratio for the steam, and the product stream is two fifty and seven bar. The process operates at steady state. Calculate T1 and T2, assuming the blender operates adiabatically. So to keep the heat flow is zero. So perhaps we start from um, looking at this ratio. So if if we have 1.96, okay, for every one kilogram of steam. So we can set up our stream, uh, our uh, kilogram for the steam. Okay, so we can set up. Uh, we can take a new page. That uh, we have a system. Let's say that the 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 heat flow is zero. First, we have the first stream, the superheated. Uh, this is 10 bar T1 and we have 7 bar T2 okay now the ratio is 1.96 kilogram of steam okay so the ratio for T1 is should be if this is 1.96 kilogram this should be one kilogram okay based on the ratio so the total if this is given so if we have this mass then we have 2.96 kilogram at the output right and the conditions this is 7 bar and t3 is 250 degrees celsius what we are looking for is t1 and t2 Okay, if you look at the saturated steam, so saturated steam at P7 bar, you will get your T is 165 degree of Celsius. So we can say that T is 165 for T2. And for for the enthalpy, uh, enthalpy can be obtained from table B six and B seven. This is also from table B six. Okay. Now the enthalpy from the the third product, the output, 
we get uh, the enthalpy for the steam the vapor when P is 7 bar and T is 250 degrees Celsius you can check the table this will be equal to 2954 kilojoule per kilogram this is from table B7 and the enthalpy for the second second part is one so we have H1 H2 H3 this will be vapor at P7 bar and saturated this is 2760 this is from table B6 and of course in energy balance we have all the kinetics potential work shaft and also the heat because it's adiabatic this is all will be zero so delta of enthalpy will be zero which means this is <coughs> going to be uh, 2.96 this one the h3 2.96 enthalpy h3 minus 1.96 H1 plus 1 um, H2 or we can calculate that we get uh, 2.96 2.954 minus 2.96 H1 minus 2760 okay 2760 so this is zero so we will get the h1 right we will get the h1 we will get the h1 is you can type in your calculator minus 2760 divided by 1.96 and after we get this, we get some kilojoule per kilogram, right? And then we can look on the table for the temperature. Okay. So we are looking on um, if I put this three nine nine thousand minus six six sixty five almost I think almost three thousand three thousand something three thousand right 3000 something let's say 3000 something like this this will be uh, correlates with t1 approaching at least 300 degrees celsius if you check the table check the table b7 it will be around this 300 celsius and the second question is, what is the second question? I forgot. If in fact heat is being lost from the blender to the surroundings, is your estimate of T1 too high or too low? Okay. Heat being lost Uh, being lost if heat being lost then the the temperature uh, not temperature entering temperature entering temperature would have to be higher for the exiting temperature okay okay do, do, you, do you get this point uh, this is from the um, first term thermodynamics right so if you have um, temperature that is really high or 
this is temperature a little low then heat heat will heat will be will be released right heat will be released okay so heat will be released from the temperature that is higher to temperatures that is lower okay that's clear so then if we have the result 300 compare with 250 i think i think this 300 is still too low for 250 it should be higher than this so um t1 is too low too low because difference in 50 degrees celsius is considered just a uh, just a little bit so it should be maybe difference in 200 or one or 200 100 at least the the digits should be in one uh, in hundreds okay do we have still have time i think we we are in the last part okay i will just give you this all this um question so we have one two three okay okay any any questions you might you might have you can also check this one uh 46 if you want to check 46 okay and this one maybe 41 and 40 you can check this one you can check uh, 37 and probably 38 okay and this one you can check maybe 31 and 29 and this one maybe 26 okay i will give you this all this uh set set problem sets okay so we might have a quiz but uh, probably next week next week or next two weeks okay next week. so we will have maybe on monday okay? maybe on monday okay i will I, I need to prepare um all the questions first so if if i i if i didn't make it then it will be next two weeks so we will uh, continue for this week chapter 8 okay chapter 8 so next week also chapter 8 okay. but if I finish this week I will give you an announcement before Monday probably on the weekend whether we will have a quiz on 16 or maybe um, two weeks after okay but if two weeks after then we, we might have physical exam but that will be depends on the situations okay so i think i will just end up until here i will give you this notes and uh, question and you can try to solve the one that i marked okay hopefully that 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 is uh i believe for your uh, exercise okay okay any questions any questions or any anything that you might ask okay so we will have uh, online lectures supposedly to be until uh, may 22nd right may 22nd and after that we might have we might have a physical class or still going for online but of course if we have exam um, the default should be a physical exam unless there is some 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 change or some other announcement from from the school okay if there's no questions then i will end our lecture up until here see you this thursday okay and i will stop the recording